Yeah. Welcome back, everybody. We have a special guest on the channel today. Many of you may recognize him, Honest Outlaw. How you doing? So, uh, if you guys watch his channel, have seen any of his stuff, there's no doubt he is a 2011 fanboy. And on this channel, we almost never talk about 2011s. I think I have one video on one on the whole channel out of like 2,000 videos. So what we did is I asked Chris, what are your top five 2011s? So we're going to go over them and yeah, yeah. why you like them. So right. yeah, we're going to shoot them too, don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I went ahead and I picked five of my favorites and I usually try to diversify a little bit on brands, but he asked for my favorites. So you're going to get my favorites. So I guess you just want to start off with number five? Yeah. All right, so number five for sure is going to be uh, my Staccato XC. It's kind of hard to pick because I love them all. They're like my kids. But uh, this is my Staccato XC here, and it is not stock. Uh, this was actually done up because I have a Phoenix Trinity grip on it. I wanted a little more weight, and I wanted a longer trigger pull. So uh, we went with that. The Staccato is an amazing 2011 for the price. It comes in at like $4,000. I know that seems like a lot, but wait for it. It's going to get higher. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, 2011s are like a Formula One car. They're not the most reliable gun in the world, I'll be honest with that, but they're so much more reliable than they used to be to the point to where stuff like the XC and the Alice's, you can run a thousand easy even without cleaning. You shouldn't, but you can. Uh, we have several thousand through each one of these you'll see on the table, and the Staccatos in particular don't have any failures. Well, I, I think the XC maybe had one that was related to ammunition, but it is what it is. And that's hard to do, especially when you put comps on guns and you start messing with spring weights and all kinds of other stuff. Because especially with the atlases and stuff, they, they're they sprung very, very, very loose. So uh, it's kind of interesting how well they can actually machine them to work and be very accurate. But the XC has a four and a half inch barrel, single port comp, slide cuts, and an SRO mount on it. But I also added Atlas 45 degree safeties, and it doesn't have a pin grip safety, but I wish it did. Yeah. And a giant magnum. And definitely just from shooting a bunch of different ones. I think the four and a quarter inch barrel is kind of the sweet spot for those. Yeah, yeah. Somewhere between four and a quarter and like four, six. If you go to five, yeah. then they get sluggish when they're, they're going back and forth. Very much so, the sights on track as well. Yep, yep. That's why a lot of times when you see the single port comps, they don't put them on the end of the five, they just cut the slide and they do it like that. And you can see most of them are cut in like that and that has like a little island sight on it, which allows you to have a little more uh, weight up front. And the port uh, allows you to have more weight up front because they can do a full dust cover as well. So very front heavy, but when you're shooting at it, it stays really flat. All right, what's up next? All right, up next is gonna be, let's just keep going with the race guns, I suppose. Let's do it. Uh, this is going to be an upgraded version of Staccato XC, as you okay. can see here. This one's gonna come in at $7,000. <laughs> and you can see that it's a similar concept. So we have a single port comp, we've got a 4.6 slide, and then we have an SRO again, because I like that optic. And then we have the same safeties, but we have Atlas's grip here. And Atlas's grip is gonna be a lot more grippy, and then you're gonna be able to put uh, grip panels in there as well. And they're to enlarge the grip, but they're also to bite down and this gun has the least recoil of any handgun I've ever shot. What is it? It's an Atlas Herbus. Sorry, Erebus. I just did a video on Erebus. Yeah, terrible. But uh, same trigger, obviously, and then this one accepts uh, most, if not all, the uh, 2011 magazines in the market, but the Staccato and the Atlas mags, which Atlas mags are just tuned, right. uh, Gen 2 Staccato mags, yep. are the best, yeah, for I, sure. Yeah, I agree. Uh, 2011s are well. super mag like sensitive, and if you get weird stuff like MBX mags or a lot of the... Uh, I don't want to say cheap because they're not cheap. Like MDX no, is like 150 not, bucks, right. but Staccato is the way to go. And this is made patterned off the Staccato mags, so you can get them and they run really well. Have you tried the uh, new Holosun competition optic? I haven't yet. I, I haven't yet. I, I have. It's nice. I weirdly yeah. like the circle yep. for some reason because, like, you know how you like run an EOTech, it's got the square, yep. the circle, and the circle dot. Like an SRO for me is like just a big like circle target. No, I love the SRO. But it SRO sucks because well. if I were to take the SRO and I were to drop it on my floor right so now, it's over. It would no longer exist. True. <laughs> I've done that on the channel. <laughs> yeah, I, I've done that from this table with that gun. Uh, yeah. So, but cool. very very cool. The fastest gun you could possibly get but it's heavy, mm -hmm. it's expensive, and it's very task oriented. So like, you can only use this for competition or maybe like home defense if you wanted a very, pretty loud one. Right, the, it's interesting that it has those grip panels, not a lot of 2011s have that. Yeah, I think it's the only one, actually. It's the, it's the yeah. only one I've seen. Yeah, so. and then they lock, you just take the magwell off and they just slide right in. Nice. It's easy. All right, All right. Let's keep going. Now, uh, let's go with Probably, probably another half. Do you know how much money is on this table? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like a life savings. This, this is why I don't have an expensive car. It's all right here. Correct. 
Same. All right, so this is the mini version of the Herberus. This is gonna be the Atlas Ares, and this is the gun I actually helped design. Uh, it doesn't have a magazine uh, uh, <laughs> release in it right now, because it's actually in the Herberus, because I put an extended magazine uh, release in it, and it broke off. Oh. So yeah, I can't send it back like that, so I just took mine out. Because that's a review gun. That's a technique. Yeah, yeah. That's one way to do but it. But in all fairness, 2011 is easy. You just turn it and it pops right out. But uh, so if you're wondering why it doesn't have a magazine release, it's because I'm not currently using it. But it's a 425, just like we talked about. Very, very slick, very, very fast. And it has uh, uh, dual ports up there. And the reason why I went with a dual port instead of a single comp is because at night, when you're shooting at night, it bees out. And I know comps don't usually mess up your, your night shooting normally. But it does happen to me sometimes, especially with like hot ammo or, or cheap ammo. So I just wanted them coming out the sides, and that way you don't have too much trouble blowing off your front sight. Although you can still see I managed to do it. Yes, yes, yeah. You That's the problem with you know people put fiber optics on comp guns, right? And then you carry a yeah. lot of fiber optics. They don't last that long. No, either. well they don't last that long without the comp. Right. In fairness, true. Yeah, but yeah, no, the B porting is the way to go. Uh, I think Glock actually has done that with their recent comp models as well. Yeah, yeah, I think the 19 Cs and yeah. all that, right? Yeah. The new ones. Yeah. The old ones didn't have it though. Yeah, and then you can see on this one we have backup iron sights, and then we have an SRO again. But yeah, yeah no, same not... Atlas grip. Is that sight part of the mount? Yeah, it is. Okay. Yep. Smart. Yep. Yeah, but in all fairness, so I've never ran. The iron sights through the SRO because, like, even when the SRO goes down in competition, I just still shoot use the fucking it. window. I agree. Yeah, yeah. I don't even see the sights. So. Right. Cool. But yeah. All right. Number yeah. two. Before I go, the one go cool ahead. thing about this is this was actually my carry gun for a long time, and it still is every once in a while. When and it, I was in a two gun match. When it has a mag release. When it has. Sometimes when it does. <laughs> <laughs> I just pop around it. No. But uh, my uh, competition gun went down, and I did uh, go to this okay. in the middle of a match, and I did actually perform better with this than I did with my XC. That's interesting. Yeah. So I don't know if it's a 425. I don't know if it's lighter, easier right. to move. What's the price point on this one? Uh, like six, 6,000. Yeah. So it's definitely the world's most expensive video. I need to get like a couple HKs in here. You, didn't, <laughs> you know, they I can said, even have. I should have brought some machine guns, right? There you go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So what what is the average price of machine gun? 50, 50, 100? So for a transferable, probably about fifty thousand is probably mm, average. Yeah. Uh, the cheapest you can get into it right now is about ten thousand, uh, and that's like a junky Mac. Right, you know? right, right. Um, yeah, and like your average AR-15 types. 30,000 starting point. Yep. So yeah. That's kind of cool though, because it's just receiver and you pop a bunch of shit on it. Correct. But yeah. So basically all these for one machine gun. So you decide. Right, exactly. All right. <laughs> Let's keep going. We're almost all there. right. And another one is going to be, well, I'll do this. I'll go back to staccato for this one too. If you guys follow my channel, you guys know I've done like a dozen videos on this gun. This comes in at $2,000. This is the uh, C2, uh, the C2 Duo, uh, with the one with the dots on it, they're like 25, so they're a little more. But I would say this, if you're looking for a 2011, for the first 2011, or maybe your only 2011, this is really the way to go, in my opinion. It's, it's cheap, it's just as reliable, and it's almost as fast as all the guns on this list. That's one thing that's the problem with 2011s, is you go up to like the $2,000 price point, and then two to seven is like very diminishing returns, like very, it goes way, way low. Right. And with this, you can shoot super fast, super accurate, and you're gonna have access to the staccato mags and it's gonna be like what I would call like duty reliable. Sure. You know, cause like the P's and stuff, they've been tested for law enforcement. The C2s are often carried by law enforcement now. Yeah, there's a lot of law enforcement carrying. Yeah. You still get the bull barrel, you still get the 425 slide, so it reciprocates really fast. Uh, I have a dark side precision uh, lower on there, it gives you more uh, texture, but you don't really need it cause there's very little recoil for, uh, it's like a 26 ounce gun. Yep. So it's about the weight of a Glock 19. The mags are heavier though. So when you load them up, they are heavier. Right. Cause the mags are steel. Makes sense. And then I've got rocking the EPS on there. Yeah, what's crazy to think about, uh, for folks that don't know, my opinion anyway, uh, Staccato is just a much more reliable gun than it used to be. The current mm -hmm. ones, they've gotten way better. And if you look at like uh, the Prodigy, this one's not that much more than that. No, it's not. And the record is just so and much And if you better. look at all the Prodigies that work and how much money they put into those right. to make them work, you Correct. know, you're gonna be better off just buying that. Agreed. I mean, I got a, a buddy who has two of them now, and they're 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 iffy. Yeah, but that's like Springfield too. In all fairness, they come into stuff and they gotta fix it. Yep, yeah, for sure. Hopefully <laughs> right. they do. So quick though, what do you think about the EPS carry? I love the EPS carry. Um, I have several of them. The Actually, kind of, it's a big EPS. Sorry. Oh, is it? EPS carry is a little one. Yeah, I got one of those around here. Too. I do too. Yeah. So um, <laughs> they're great sights uh, for the size of it and the durability and the price point. Kind of hard to beat, especially with that fully enclosed house. Right. Right. And they're durable. They are. It's annoying how durable they are. Because yeah. I, I want to buy American, I want to promote American, and then you end up like, it kind of sucks because you have SROs on all my competition guns, and then on the gun I protect my house with, right? Hiles on. Yeah. yeah. Or an RMR. I would use an RMR too. I would too. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard to buy American to have similar qualities these days. But Especially with electronics, yeah. Yep. 
And then uh, and number one, another Atlas, sorry, but this is actually the gun I shoot in competition currently. And uh, this is my limited optics gun. Uh, there's only, this is one of a kind, so you, you can't buy this. But uh, this is actually a ported and non-ported Athena. So I run a ported barrel uh, for, yeah, yeah. So it, it can either run ported or non-ported. I have okay. spring and barrel setups for each. Okay. And then I can run it open if I want, and then I can run it with optics if I want. And uh, you actually, if you have Comp 2011s, you have to spring them differently if you run a ported or non-ported barrel, because right. they will malfunction. Yep. Uh, part of that's due because the slides are so light and they're so finicky. But this one in particular is one of the, Atlas came out with the 4.6 and they were one of the first people to do that. And this is their, basically their red dot version of their flagship product. And it has basically everything you would ever want on it. And I picked every accessory on this personally. So I picked the trigger, the, the safety, the grips, as you can see, the double-sided yeah. gigantic grip. Yeah. Can, can somebody pick that though if they want to? Oh, absolutely. Somebody watching this? Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think they're gonna be out with the ported barrels at some point. I'm not even sure if I'm supposed to talk about them. Okay. <laughs> anyway. But I am, it's not that big of a deal. Uh, but yeah, I think, you can get everything but the ported barrel, and I'm pretty sure if you ask real nice, you can get that too. I would imagine at the price point, they'd make that happen. Oh yeah, yeah. It's, it's kind of, they're like semi-custom companies, yep. so you you basically go into it and you can pick a series of accessories, and if you want to go further, you probably just pay a little extra. What's the wait time on something like that? These are actually way less than SVI. So I've got an SVI here, which is like the flagship 2011, and the reason why I didn't make the top five is because these are somewhere between a year and three years, depending on what you buy, and they start at like seven grand. And I know that that is absurd. And these are th less than three months. Okay. But if you go to dealers like Manning and Sons or somebody, you can get it right now. Nice. Like these yeah. are available in gun stores occasionally. Yeah. Whereas like SVI, good luck. Right. Yeah. There's no. I've never seen one. In yeah. That store. Cool. All right. Well. Yeah. And then you want me to do a quick honorable mention for you? Yes. So I want to do a little honorable mention at probably the only gun on the market that keeps up with 2011s. My personal fan, and that's going to be the Lago Arms Alien. And it's equally as expensive. It's even rarer than these as of right now. Lancer Correct. Systems was importing them for a while, but I don't even know if they still are. They had a new generation and then it kind of fell apart. Correct. Yeah, they're not importing them right, right now. Right, right. But these are a gas system gun and they're really neat because they, you know, everybody talks about the bore axis of firearms and they're like, well, if you get a bore axis that was lower than your finger, it would have no recoil at all. But that's actually not true. So what happens is, is you, you feel the full weight of the recoil because it doesn't flip up it really does go straight back. So right. you have to get used to it because it does bump your hand. We'll find out. Yeah, I will find I've out. never shot one before. And you really can take the optic trail off and put iron sights on and it stays zero, nice. which is wild. It's just a little top rail right there and the reciprocating uh, portion is just on the side, which is very strange because if you're used to racking the slide right. or if you're used to like grabbing the optic or using the optic, I don't know how many times I've slammed the optic and <laughs> nothing has happened. <laughs> I, would, I would do that too. I That's can. why I don't use this because it's so weird. It's probably going to happen today. Yeah, I yeah. think so. And the trigger's very odd. So it's like, it's not super light, but the reset's crazy. Okay. So it's just like hard pull bump okay. and it bumps you off like a, like a machine gun. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds good. All right, we got the Staccato C2. We're starting out with the well, poor man's gun, if you will. Sarcasm. <laughs> and it does take standard 2011 mags, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, well. ah, let, me, let me bump that up, Tad. There we go. Ah. It looks so easy when Chris is doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Where is that going? This gun's zeroed? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Maybe I suck. So there's that. That's okay. Don't worry about it. You're going to get better, I promise you. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> Next up, another staccato. This one here is the XC. So we have that comp out front. SRO. Safety is nice. All right. Weird, though. Yes, it is. I don't know what that I'm That one doing. might not be zeroed. Can you? Yeah. I think that one's zeroed. Yeah, that one was not bad. It's just me sucking. Let, let me let me bum that guy quick. I, sure. I just want to shoot a couple, two rounds through it so I can see if it's actually zeroed because I'm not sure. It probably is. I probably suck. Nope, it's not, because mine didn't go either. All right. 
That makes me feel a lot better. Yeah, it's not <laughs> it's not zeroed. That's why I was worried. I was like, there's no way. <laughs> Secrets of the outlaws. Yeah. We don't zero anything. <laughs> no, that one's zero. These two are zeroed. I promise you that. All right. This is the Athena. And the non-ported one. Non-ported. Atlas. All right. There we go. That slide is insane, yeah. the way it feels. Even, yeah. Especially being non-ported, it feels like it's on, like, people say glass, but not even glass. I yeah. mean, it's, well, the nice thing about it is not, it doesn't eliminate recoil, but it does drop right back. Right. You know, so if you 100%. just, like a lot of times with guns like these, people over-muscle them, yeah. and then you kind of drop them down. If you could let it go, and it, it'll do what you want it to. I think that's what I just did. <laughs> 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 huh? The targets make more sound than others. If I'm you shoot here. the Wilson Combats, they don't even do anything. So, I, people think you miss. Yeah. <laughs> the next one is also same company, Atlas, but with the comp, all the fancy stuff. Yep, yep. Everything you could possibly put on a handgun is on that, except for a blender or a light. <laughs> except for the practical things. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Who needs a light? You don't need to see. Oh. That trigger, I didn't think it was gonna yeah, break. That's 1.9 pounds. That's crazy. <laughs> I, I thought I was prepping it. Yeah. Nope. Just goes off. Wow. Wow. That's probably the nicest trigger I've ever shot. Yeah. I mean, that's what I tell people, but they don't actually believe me. <laughs> yeah, ghost it for it. I mean, and then the reset is it bumps it, it bumps you right back. I mean, that's about as good as it gets, kids. That's probably why it costs seven thousand dollars. Probably, yeah. Odds are good. Yeah, it's it's hard. Shots. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a few with it because I mean I love this gun. I shot it's a nice. thousand rounds for this gun in less than a week. Yeah, I could definitely see how you could do that. It's not hard. You no. know, you take a gun out and you shoot 100 rounds, maybe your wrist hurts a little or something like that. Right. You could do two, 300 with this. Yeah. Because there's no recoil. One thing on my hands, it happened to me twice when I was shooting. I bumped the safety up with my right knuckle. Oh, did you really? I did it twice. I yep. do that too. Okay. Yep. That's one of the reasons why they make it small on the on the right side, because right. that is a problem. But I think most of this is, the, the pad is so big because you are designed to like just right. push down okay. on it. Yep. Use it like a gas pedal. Yep. Bumped one there. Yeah. See, that's why we have competent people shoot the guns in videos. <laughs> <laughs> it helps. All right. Now we have our honorable mention, the Lago Alien. I have never fired this gun. I've handled it at gun shows and stuff like that, but I've never actually fired it. So we'll see. So the well, dot's guaranteed not going to work because that the biggest downside of this gun is the red dot. That's the only red dot that works on the gun, and it never works. Yeah. So, if it doesn't work, it's we'll not. just have to shoot it's it up not. close. All right. <laughs> so it is. Interesting. That and, slide release is also interesting. Right. And the other thing you're going to notice is like you break it like a Glock and then keep breaking and eventually you'll see your sight. <laughs> Got it. Yeah, we're just zeroed up here in the center. That is a unique recoil yeah, impulse. Yep. Especially compared to like the, uh, the Herberus or something like that. Right. Yep. Very strange. And it looks weird when you're looking at it too. It does, it does. <laughs> if it doesn't have the dot, it just had the iron sights, you're aiming there, which is real weird. Right. Ooh. It's fast though. Oh, it is, yeah, yeah. It's super fast. How much is this gonna cost? Oh, it's a lot, five I or bet. six, yep. If but the, it's very unique, because you know, it's running the, the, a gas system in it, which is a little bit different, and then the hammer actually falls from the top. Right, it feels like five, six thousand dollars. I mean, it yeah. feels well built. Well, it's, a lot of R&D goes into that, and you know as well yep. as I do, like if you're running an AR or something like that, you, that's the, the $300 AR is the benefit of 60 years of R&D and, and, you know, machinery already tooled and stuff like that, whereas this is totally new. Right. That red dot system is stupid, though. Oh, it's real dumb. Just throwing yep, that yep. out there. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Got something biting me. Yeah. Fly, sorry. It's the uh, Iowa welcome party. Yeah, it yep. is. But yeah, no, I mean, that shoots phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. So 
if I knew where the box was, all you have to do is push this pin out and you put the iron sight right. uh, plate back on. But I don't know where it is, and that's also I use my guns, which is why it's covered in paint. Yeah, same. So <laughs> yeah, no, that's. A, I might actually looking to get one of these. How's reliability been? Oh, extremely good. The problem is they get dirty quick. I, I literally just saw that. I don't know if the camera will pick that up, but you can see just how dirty it is. Oh, they get crazy dirty. Yeah, it's the gas system just put yep, it right back yep. in there. But yeah, no, that shoots very, very well. Impressive. You want to borrow that and do a full video? You can have it for a while. Yeah. Just send it back to me. <laughs> Might I don't do care. That. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we came back inside to get out of the wind. Uh, definitely the big thing shooting those guns back to back that you brought up earlier mm -hmm. is the diminishing point of diminishing. Effect, Absolutely. Right? So even that compact staccato shoots really well. It does. All right. So I, it's not my first time shooting 2011s but I don't shoot them all that often. And I'm totally just gonna make excuses here because it's YouTube. <laughs> but I, in all seriousness, I think that some of the uh, misses I was having was just not being accustomed to those triggers. I mean, they're just That's so nice. That's absolutely right. I yep. typically shoot duty duty type guns. And I mean, they're just so good, but I bet. That happens to everybody who shoots them. It's so common because the, like you said, the triggers are so light that you're trying to prep it like a Glock and it's, you don't have anything to prep. Right. but. You know, if I didn't know anything about the guns, this still would have been my favorite. So, yeah. You know, uh, it definitely shoots the best, tracks the best. Uh, I mean, the way that thing rides, like I said, it's just, there's not a lot of guns like that. No. Definitely not. And you have to pay so much for it, which is why most people never will experience it. Right. You know, and it's kind of hard to, like, give you, I, it's kind of hard to recommend a 7,000 or gun to anybody. Agreed. Unless you're going to shoot it all day, every day for everything. Or there's some people that just love spending money on guns. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I mean, if that's you, awesome. But I would say that this gun, or rather the Staccato, can probably do 98 to 99% performance-wise of what this gun can do. I would argue that it could even do more in some situations. Right. Because like, if I were defending my home, for example, would I want a P, a Staccato P, or a Staccato C2? Would I want that? And I guess the answer is, is this is my home defense gun, right. and that's not. Right. So yeah, and I get why. Yeah. Uh, for sure. Yep. Um, that reliability, less bells and whistles, all yep. of that. Um, but less yeah. to go wrong. Less to, less holes in it, less, uh, especially comps. I'm not a huge fan of comps indoors. Nor am I. Yep. I, I enjoy hearing. <laughs> so, so yes, not a huge fan. Um, but yeah, I mean, obviously 2011 is a platform that is growing in popularity. So there's probably going to be a lot of more, a lot more rather, uh, competitive options coming in the future year. So what do you think? What do you think they're going to do to make them better? Oh man. Well, I mean, they're going to have to make them lower cost. Agreed. That's you know, the first it, thing. and as everything gets more available, you're going to have, you know, cost reduction, yep. obviously. Um, I know a few people that are coming out with them for next year and the year after. And I think one of the things that did that was the prodigy in all fairness, because uh, I agree. Most people that are new to 2011 are getting into the prodigy right now because mm -hmm. it's just at the $1,500. And as it gets lower, you're going to find some in the thousands that are going to work eventually. Yep. Cause like, let's be honest, like what goes into this that costs $2,000? I mean, there's fitment, some, right, 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 but not. But you could lower, it, correct? For sure, you and could. you could still get reliability out of this gun. You know, maybe right. have a little heavier trigger, so be it. But right. yeah, I think I think they're going to make them lower cost. As far as like function, I mean, it's hard to change something that's so old, right? Because like the, the general design of the gun is basically 1911. 100. percent It's pretty close, right? You know, higher quality materials, higher quality manufacturing, what? double stack lower, right? And one thing over the years that has changed again for folks that are new to these guns is the magazine quality. That that's the number one thing, right? The, the when Staccato came out with the Gen 2 magazines, they were the first magazines that had a reliable lockback. Correct. Before that, you couldn't even get lockback on 2011s. It's just if you did have it, you would have lockback pretty frequently halfway through the magazine, and they would have a lot of problems. Whereas now you get lockback, which a lot of people like, and on top of that, you get a gun that can run a couple hundred rounds or a couple thousand rounds potentially with very little maintain, very little maintenance stuff right. like that, and you don't have to get your magazines and spring them. Right. You don't have to do like all the gunsmithing that involves with a 2011. 2011s are, they're an expert gun. hundred percent. Like I always say small frame, like a J frame revolver is also an expert's gun. It is. This would be as well. Um, but I think as these grow in popularity, somebody like Metgar or one of the big mag mm -hmm. companies is going to put a magazine out for it that will change everything. I would agree. I know that Duramag tried to do it with the Prodigy, but 
I've seen mixed results. Right. We still have time, you know, and like, you know, I mean, sometimes things come out and they don't work right away and then eventually they do. Gen 4 Glock, you know. Yep. And uh, <laughs> that's, how my, that's how my channel started. Right, that's right. Now. And uh, I, I just think that this is going to be a very viable platform. And I agree. a lot of things that enter the tactical world often come from the competition world. Always. And Always. this year, limited optics became legal. Right. And it's a nine millimeter 2011 uh, competition uh, uh, division. And because of that, you're going to see so many more people get into 2011s right away because nobody wants to shoot 40 and they, want, they don't want to make a power factor. It just is what it is. It is. Like true. you'll never find somebody shooting 40 at a competition these days. And it's because. Nine millimeters is cheap, it's effective, it's easy to shoot, and people love it. And you, and don't, you don't need the power factor. Right, and if you put nine millimeter in a 2011, what you have is like almost no recoil. Right. And that's an amazing thing. You can give one of these to somebody, and if they have a little experience with it, like my wife, for example, she can shoot at 50, 75 yards with these guns, and it's just isn't possible with a lot of firearms, like maybe even what we just shot. Right, You know, the, I agree. Yep. So, yeah. I mean, I think that pretty much sums up the 2011s. So. Also, why you think these are the top five. We already went into that, so. Mm -hmm. Thanks for having me out. Oh, dude, no problem. I definitely appreciate it. Shoot Gucci guns it, it is always a good day. And uh, thank you all for watching. I truly appreciate it. If you guys aren't following Chris, definitely do so. There will be a link down below in the video description to do that. And uh, check out my social media sites, subscribe, all that stuff that YouTubers say. And we look forward to seeing you in the next video. See you later.